After 60 days on the road, a flat battery, thanks to a faulty fan. But it's easily fixed. Tim Nicholson and Joanne Bolt are soon back on the road. Having left their guide in Libya, they finally made it to Egypt, the last country before they leave Africa. We're out on our own. We haven't even got a guide book, which is slightly worrying. It'll be one of our first acquisitions. Let's go and get a guide book so that we can um, make our way independently and hopefully successfully. Having driven from Oxford, UK, through France, Spain, Morocco, Tunisia and Libya, Tim and Joanne can afford some time out to relax and catch up with a spot of admin. I'm sure this is the most exotic place that I've updated, where I've spent some time updating the diary on our, on our laptop so far. Most of the time I, I sit in a, in a hotel room or um, sit in the car. I'm feeling very, very hot and sweaty because it gets pretty hot. But this is fabulous. I'm really not quite sure what... Um what's going to happen here, but it's going to be shorter, that's for sure. When you've been living out of a small car for two months, it's easy to let a few things slip. These look good for the ambassador tomorrow and the media we're meeting at our press conference. And that's the reason, a publicity exercise on Egyptian TV. Tim and Joanna are raising money for the Red Cross and every bit helps before the next leg of the journey. We're going to spend a few days catching up on, on our emails and, and some work that we have to do by the coast. Then we're going to load the car onto a ship and Florence is going to head off to India without us. It's the first time we've spent without her and she's holding up incredibly well. Let's hope it continues. Despite a hectic schedule, before they move on there's still time for a spot of sightseeing. With Egypt behind them, they now have India, Australia and New Zealand to go. Alistair Fee, BBC South Today. Indian monsoon. This is the halfway mark for Tim Nicholson and Joanne Bolt. Their car was shipped over whilst they flew from Egypt. Getting it back again has proved frustrating. I left where we're staying in town at about 9.30 this morning. It's now about quarter past four. I've not had any lunch. I'm just sat here in the car. It's now pouring with rain. and I'm surrounded by containers. Hopefully, we'll actually get the necessary signatures which will enable us to leave today. Otherwise, we'll have to come back here tomorrow, which is just tedious in the extreme. So far, they've driven from Oxford, UK, through France, Spain, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya and Egypt. Having made it to India, they now have Australia and New Zealand left to go. Back on the road at last. Built 50 years ago, it's thought there are less than 100 Morris Oxfords left in the world. But to cope with the roads in India, this 1950s car needed a spot of work. The car is here in the garage just having some work done on it to make sure that we can cope with our time in India, particularly the potholes, which are really bad as a result of the monsoon. So we're having the suspension uh, adjusted. They're taking the leaf springs off and re-cambering them, amending the um, curve on them to lift the car up a bit. So hopefully it'll be much better position to, uh, to cope with the Indian roads. After thousands of miles of driving behind them, a chance for Tim and Joanne to relax at the Bel Air Sanatorium, a hospital run by the charity they're raising money for, the Red Cross. If I'm in a tank, and uh, like a blue um, box tank, I'm sitting on a stool that swivels up so you get the right height, so that just my neck and head are sticking out. And then um, I'm closed in with the door. And then there's a pressure cooker <clears throat> actually attached to it. So the steam from the pressure cooker being fed through a pipe into this um, box <laughs> in which I'm sitting. And here's why this car needed a bit of work on her suspension. But the hazards of driving in India aren't limited to the road conditions alone. On three separate occasions, buses came round blind bends on our side of the road straight at us. And they don't seem to even hesitate, let alone blow a horn or anything. They just drive straight at you. Um, so we just managed to swerve and get out of the way and survived it. When you're halfway around the world, there's no telling what will happen next. Tim Nicholson and Joanne Bolt still have thousands of miles to drive before reaching Oxford, New Zealand. Alistair Fee, ABC South Today. Crashed trucks litter the roadside. In India, it's an unnerving though all too familiar sight. Halfway around the world, it's the driving conditions that have caused the most problems. There are cows everywhere. There are oxen all over the place and the lorries and buses uh, pay no regard to uh, which side of the road they want to be on and will happily run you off the road, which is 
very, very it happened to us several times, and we were very close to actually um, having a head-on collision, which was pretty scary. Apart from its unique paintwork, Tim and Joanne's 1950s Morris Oxford is a familiar sight. The Hindustan Ambassador is the modern-day relation and India's most popular car, so spares are easy to come by. This is probably one of the most luxurious and self-indulgent afternoons that we've spent, uh, probably on our whole trip. We're on a houseboat in Kerala, and we're just cruising around the backwaters, being treated to some fabulous food, and waited on by um, three men who are running it, one driving, the other one is an assistant, and a chef. And while taking some time out from the road, what better way to relax than through yoga? We're on our way to Pondicherry, and we're doing something that we don't normally do, which is driving at night. The difficulties of driving on Indian roads are magnified well, probably ten times, because loads of people don't have lights. You've got pedestrians, cyclists, ox carts, tractors, lorries. It's completely crazy. Then we went to Trivandrum and to Kanyakumari, the most southerly tip of India. Along the trip, Tim and Joanne have held press conferences. The more publicity they get, the more money they hope to raise for the Red Cross. In India, they've had plenty of reviews. Madras port. Madras port. Port. Straight. And then straight. Straight. Top of bridges, straight road. Straight, go straight. Straight, straight. Okay. We've seen some amazing sights in India, and we have experienced just the most fabulous hospitality. So it's been a it's now time to move on. So far, Tim Nicholson and Joanne Bolt have driven from Oxford, UK, through France, Spain, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya and Egypt. After India, they have Australia and New Zealand left to go. Alastair Fee, BBC South Today. Boxed up and ready to leave for the next leg of the journey. Tim and Joanne's 1950s Morris Oxford, nicknamed Florence, is safely packed inside one of these containers. We're on board a regional container line ship in the port of Madras. We'll shortly be heading across the sea to Singapore. We're very lucky to be here because it's very unusual that anybody other than the crew would travel on a cargo ship. Florence was stuffed into a container a couple of days ago, and she should be in one of the containers that's recently been loaded behind us. Okay. Okay. Perks of being the first passengers to travel with their cargo. The trip from India to Singapore took six days. A welcome relief after driving for thousands of miles across Europe, North Africa and through India. Well, the clue is we're going from Oxford to Oxford. And the make is a Morris Oxford. With the car off the boat, time for a short presentation about their trip to school children in Singapore. But Joan and Tim aren't driving through this country, it's merely a stop off on their way to Australia. Live on Singapore television, the more publicity they can get, the more money they hope to raise for the Red Cross. We're just preparing to ship the car to Australia. Apparently, the quarantine rules are incredibly strict, so we're having to have the car professionally cleaned inside and out. That includes under the bonnet, in the engine, and in the boot, which I think is the first time it's happened for a very long time. I've also just cleaned my trainers because apparently they check the soles of shoes to make sure there are no spare bits of mud or grass left over. 10,000 miles and seven sea crossings behind them. On arrival in Australia, it looks like all that hard work paid off. Customs is done. Uh, the Tane is stamped. It's, it's done for the import. Really good. Uh, all the customs formalities and inspections are done. The quarantine is finished. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, this is probably the first time ever that I've had a car passed without a wash. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's true. Um, so that was great. Um, so okay, now, now we go to the inspection centre. Yep, that's all that's left to be to be done. You go to the inspection centre, they'll just check that the car is roadworthy, right. which is obviously it's roadworthy by yep. the looks of it. Yep. Um, and off you go on your adventure. Brilliant. Okay, that's fabulous, Luke. Thank you very Not much. Not a problem indeed. at all. Okay. Thanks. Cheers. The final test on the road shows this 50 year old car has plenty of life still in her. We've now got our authorization to be on the road in Australia. And this little sticker shows that we're legal. Back on the road at last. 
Alistair Fee, BBC South Today.